Verizon Communications stock ticker VZ is a big dividend payer currently yielding over 7.9% and they just recently released their latest quarter's earnings report and we can see over the past five days they are up over 10%. So in this video we're going to be taking a deep dive into Verizon seeing if we can find the intrinsic value by looking at a few different valuations and jumping into their most recent quarter's earnings report. So let's go ahead and start by digging into it. We can see year to date the company is currently down around 13.62% and over the past year down around 4. 0.87%. And like I pointed out, over just the past five days, up almost 10.5%. And we can see before that, they were actually trading right at their 52 week low, close to around $30 per share. Early this year, they've traded as high as around $44.72. Let's go ahead and dig into some of those dividend metrics, like I already mentioned, currently yielding around 7.9%. If we look at the dividend history for this company, we can see they've been increasing dividends for around 19 consecutive years. And if we scroll down, they've done a pretty good job of increasing those dividend payouts steadily. You can see in 2013, they were paying out around 52 cents per share every single quarter and jump forward to now they are now paying out 67 cents per share every single quarter. Now how high were those dividend growth rates? If we click on dividend growth and scroll down we can see the 3, 5 and 10 year dividend growth rates all sitting close to around 2%. So while it is great that they have had a good history of increasing those dividend payouts, a dividend growth rate of 2% is really below the rate of inflation. So you do have to keep in mind that technically means they are paying out less in dividends every single year. So it would be nice to see a little more dividend growth in the future potentially. But obviously a company with a high starting dividend yield and a history of dividend growth, we wanna make sure those dividend payments are sustainable. So we'll jump over to the dividend safety tab. Now my favorite payout ratio to look at is the cash flow payout ratio because dividends are paid out of free cash flow. We can see right here, it looks like those free cash flow payout ratios, both sitting at around 30% for the trailing 12 months and the forward looking year. So that's a pretty healthy range to be in. And the dividend payout ratio as a result of earnings, both sitting at around 50 to 55%. Now, one of the reasons the dividend growth rate for this company has not been as high as I would like to see is if we jump over to financials and click on the balance sheet. If we scroll down, we're gonna be looking for total debt. And scroll down here and we can see we found long-term debt. Now the long-term debt for this company has been climbing over the past decade and it's really at a range that it's a little bit dangerous for the company overall. So when we talk about capital allocation for this company, it's pretty obvious why the dividend growth rates have not been very high. It's much more important for this company to currently focus on doing things like paying down debt. Now let's go ahead and start talking about the most recent quarter's earnings report. And overall, the results were pretty solid. We can see Verizon non-GAAP earnings per share of $1.22, which beat by four cents in revenue of around 33.33 billion, which was in line with analyst expectations. Now, one thing we do need to keep in mind about that number is it was a slight decrease year over year, which isn't necessarily something we want to see, but they were in line with analyst expectations. So the earnings beat probably did help spike this share price up a little bit, but I think is even more important is that Verizon was able to jump after it boosted its full year free cash flow guidance. So if we scroll down here just a little bit, we can see for fiscal 2023, Verizon now sees free cash flow above 18 billion, up from the previously estimated 17 billion. In my opinion, I think that's a big deal and a huge reason that we saw the recent spike up in the share price. The company also maintained its previous guidance for cash flow from operations within a range of 36.25 billion to 37.25 billion and expects its capital spending to be at the higher end of the previously guided range of 18.25 billion to 19.25 billion. So again, I think the bump up in free cash flow is really why we've seen this recent bump up in the share price for this company. Obviously, the way a company is going to provide value for their shareholders long term is by increasing their free cash flow year over year because it allows them to do things like pay out dividends and increase those dividend payouts, buy back shares, pay down debt. There's a lot of different ways a company can provide value to shareholders when they increase their free cash flow. Now, obviously, like we discussed, they do need to focus on paying down that debt. But let's go ahead and jump into my stock valuation spreadsheet to see if we can find the fair value value of Verizon and decide if it's a stock we should consider buying or selling. And like always, if you'd like to be able to download the spreadsheet, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. Now, okay, let's go ahead and come up here and plug in VZ and hit enter. And you can see all this data will automatically load in. We've already touched on the dividend data quite a bit, and we can see the 20 day moving average up quite a bit, the 50 day up quite a bit, but the 200 day moving average still down quite a bit. And like we discussed year to date, this company is still down around 13.6%. So no surprise there. Come down here, we can see analysts have a target price of around $38.65. Institutional ownership, a little bit low at around 63.5. And the beta is only sitting at 0.38. So you should see very, very little volatility with this company, which again, is pretty interesting because we've seen such a high spike up in the share price over the past few days. Now, the first valuation that we're going to look at is Graham's valuation. And this is a way to calculate the intrinsic value 
based off of Benjamin Graham's formula he released in the book The Intelligent Investor. So you can see our formula here. We're plugging in things like our earnings per share, our growth rate projections, which do remain fairly low for a company like Verizon. We then have the average yield on AAA corporate bonds, and then we need to plug in Y, which is the current yield on AAA corporate bonds. Now at the time of this video, it's climbed up even higher, all the way up to 5.49, which as you'll see, drive down the valuation for this company by quite a bit. So basically that means current economic conditions really pushing down this valuation by quite a bit due to the current yield on AAA corporate bonds. Now the next valuation we'll look at is the discounted cash flow analysis. And we actually have some good guidance from management since they are now expecting free cash flow to be at around 18 billion for 2023. So based off historical data, analyst expectations, and that guidance we have from management, we can build out our model. I'm projecting a free cash flow growth rate of 2.5% moving forward for the company. We find the present value of those future free cash flows, add them together, add the company's cash and cash equivalents, and subtract out their total debt. Now this number has declined just a little bit, so they are focusing on paying down their debt, which will help. But after we plug in the shares outstanding, you can see we come to a discounted cash flow price per share of $36.74 per share. Now typically we look at the multiples valuation for a lot of the companies that I analyze, but I really feel like AT&T is the only good comparable for Verizon, and one company really isn't enough to provide a good valuation for the multiples valuation, so we're not going to use it in this scenario. So that means the last valuation we'll look at is the dividend discount model. In my opinion, this is one of the best ways to value a dividend stock because it values them based on how much they pay out in dividends and how much that dividend is increasing year over year. So you can see here, I plugged in the quarterly dividend payout so we can see how much they pay out each year and we can see our year over year dividend growth rates and like we've already talked about pretty close to around 2% and on average sitting at 2.01%. So moving forward, I'm projecting a dividend growth rate of right at 2%, discount rate of 8% and that gives us a dividend discount model price per share of $44.04. So when we jump over to the output tab, we can see the three valuations that we used, grams at 33, DCF 36, and dividend discount model at 44.4. So when we average those three together, we come to an intrinsic value of $38.31. With the current trading price sitting at around $34.64, that's a difference of around 9.6%. So with a 10% margin of safety, you can come to an acceptable buy price of around $34.48. And with a 20% margin of safety, the acceptable buy price of around $30.65. So based off of this valuation, it does look like within the past week, there have been opportunities to buy Verizon within that margin of safety. But after the recent spike up in the latest quarter's earnings, it looks to be not trading quite as good of a value, but it is pretty close to its fair value right now. Obviously, it's easy to get excited about AT&T with their history of dividend growth, dividend payouts, and the nice starting dividend yield. But personally, I just don't see enough growth with this company in the future for me to consider adding shares to my portfolio right now. I typically like to see companies with higher dividend growth rates. But go ahead and let me know in the comments down below what you think of Verizon if you plan on buying or selling. Like always, if you'd like to be able to download this spreadsheet and join a community of dividend investors, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. You can also get a coupon to Seeking Alpha at my link in the description, so be sure to check that out. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.